Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Welcome to this Wednesday night Bible study for the Church of the Eternally Secure. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank Hallelujah. You. Thank you. I have no worries. I am guaranteed eternal life. I That's have right. security. Oh, that blessing. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. So I hope you can make that same boast. Boast in the finished work and promise of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. Nothing to worry about. All right. Now, um, the um, obviously the, the name, the Church of the Eternally Secure, was selected because we believe the concept, the doctrine of eternal security is the utmost of importance. In fact, I would say that that really is the heart of the gospel, the assurance that we, we know we are guaranteed eternal life because uh, it's promised by Jesus. That's our, mm. our belief in that. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, we This is a Wednesday night Bible study for the Church of the Eternally Secure. We've done many of these now for many months. I, I hope you go back and watch some of the earlier ones, but particularly uh, we're studying the book of Romans now. I hope you go back and watch the uh, beginning of the book of Romans. And right now we're on uh, Romans chapter 14 uh, on verse 13. We'll begin tonight. Before we get started, let me ask uh, Brother Cripps and Sister Renee to say hi and sisters first. So, Renee. Hey, guys. Uh, Renee Rowland, channel of the same name. I think most of you guys know me. I contend for the gospel, the grace of God. Uh, and uh, by the way, if you saw me smoke, I don't mean to offend any of you. I've been honest about my cigarette. I didn't realize the camera was on. It offends some people. Yeah. So uh, if I did, I'm very sorry if I offended you. But I, I've always been honest that I do that. I try not to do it in front of people because I know there's people struggling and they've quit smoking and it may bother them. So um, I'm sorry for that. Um, I am excited uh, because I've been finding some really great nuggets in the book of Romans and uh, I'm really excited about getting into this. And we'll miss Michael tonight, but uh, he'll be back with us soon, right? Yeah. Okay, great. All right, Brother Cripps. Uh, yes. Who are you? Who are you? When, whoa, whoa. Tell us, please. I, I, am, I am only a servant of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, without him, I am absolutely nothing. It's, it, it's only his work in me that makes me special and makes me loved and makes me valuable. Uh, but my name is Jason Cripps and I'm part of a channel called True Story Live. And we have one broadcast that comes on Sunday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, we like to uh, have discussions and bring everyone in without judgment, without division. Uh, we discuss uh, topics, uh, uh, psychological and sociological and uh, but with everything we have the the gospel as the underpinning for everything and we just have discussions about it and we're able to um, we even have a, a an atheist on the actual panel and he uh, uh, asks questions of us and the rest of us try to answer his uh, questions in his worldview and it just really makes for some interesting uh, topics and discussions. And so if you haven't uh, been over there, definitely give it a, uh, a shot. I'm also on this channel on Wednesdays. Um, love this study, guys. And as Brother Luke said at the beginning, if you haven't uh, gone back to the beginning of the Romans uh, especially, um, do yourself a favor and do that. It's very edifying. Um, also, I'm on uh, Talking Doctrine on Mondays with the show called Monday's Milk. Um, I basically just try to be available if anyone ever needs me for a discussion, and, and uh, that's worked out very well. God's blessed me in that way. Um, hello to the chat room, and I can't wait for the discussion. Thanks. The name of the channel is True Story Live. True Story Live. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Um, well, I'm always happy that uh, Renee and uh, Cripps uh, are able to join me and as Renee said, uh, Brother Michael Ultimate Mordecai is uh, invited every Wednesday and Sunday, and he will uh, join us every time his schedule permits. So perhaps this Sunday or next Wednesday, uh, you'll see him again. Uh, but uh, let's let me address the the chat room. Uh, uh, thank you for uh, being there again. If you're if you're uh, particularly if you're a moderator and you're there all the time, you have that ranch and you have a Kind of a responsibility you've accepted and uh, so thank you for let's not tolerate the trolls and and uh, let them disrupt what we're doing 
Uh, but if someone is here for the first time, and uh, let's make sure we reach out, make them feel uh, welcome. They are welcome. However, um, if someone does come into the, the chat room, that's like walking into our church and sitting down in the congregation as a Bible study is being conducted, uh, we cannot allow them to disrupt or change the Bible study. And it particularly, uh, and not only move us off the topic, but if they are challenging our core doctrines of Christianity, uh, that should not be permitted. So please mm -hmm. help me out with that since I cannot watch every comment myself. Thank you. All right, let's get started. Uh, Romans chapter 14, verse 13 says, Let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. How appropriate is that verse? <laughs> Pretty appropriate. Yeah. Well, Renee, you seem eager, so why don't you go ahead and tell Well, I, I was just thinking of that very thing when I was like, oh, I let them see me actually smoking, and some people have quit smoking or they're struggling with it, and I don't want to make them feel uh, offended. And so, um, you know, it's uh, it's perfect. It's, it's, it's like things that aren't necessarily sin, like they're not laid out as sin. Uh, we we surely have put others in bondage, like saying listening to certain music is sin, listening, you know, because they take that verse, um, friendship with the world is at enmity with God. Uh, it, and they take that really out of context and really just too far. Um, and so uh, they make everything sinful. Yeah. And so there's no joy. They can't, um, uh, give anybody else any grace if somebody disagrees on certain things like that. And I think that this is a, a good thing, you know, uh, that we shouldn't be judging each others on, on things like this. I mean, technically we're not supposed to judge somebody else as in condemn them anyway. We're supposed to judge whether we want, we will accept certain behaviors within a fellowship. Right. That's obvious, but we're not supposed to judge as in condemn anyway. But uh, I, I think this is a really important verse for the church today. Amen. Okay, amen. Uh, Brother Cripps? Thank you. Um, I agree with what Renee said. Uh, absolutely. And the thing is, uh, as we read last week, and we're talking about some of the one guy uh, eats meat, another guy doesn't, another person does this, another celebrates holiday, another doesn't. Um, and this verse is helpful in that area uh, because if if you run into someone that celebrates Christmas uh, and you have a problem with that, uh, don't go to his house and vice versa. If you know someone has a problem with Christmas and and you're inviting him over, I, I mean, it's it's really easy to say, look, brother, I know you have you guys don't celebrate Christmas just to let you know. Um, we do celebrate in our family and we have a Christmas tree up. If you're going to be offended by that, um, wait until after the first of the year and then, then I'll invite you by, you know, it takes a little extra work to, to not be a stumbling block or to remove things. If you're a, a vegan, um, it, that's fine. You don't have to push that on other people though, and cause arguments and discussions. And if you, uh, invite someone over your house that, you know, doesn't eat meat, you, you don't have to serve them meat. You don't have to offer them a plate that's a stumbling block to them. Um, so this part of this seems like it should be common sense, but it's not. A lot of the things that used to seem like common sense to me doesn't seem like they can even be called that anymore. Um, and, and, and smoking is a good example. Some people have an issue with smoking, um, but, you know, uh, Renee tries not to do that in front of people for that very reason. Uh, and then other people that don't have a problem with smoking, then it's, it's not an issue. Um, so uh, Paul's just saying here, let's, let's, let's not do this. Let's not put a reason to have someone else fall in a brother or sister's way. It's pretty, pretty simple, I think. All right. Thank you. Well, uh, we, we do need uh, context. Uh, so I think right now it is important. I think you both um, refer, referred back to the earlier verses. And there's a couple of things in there that are, uh, I'll remind everybody. And it starts out off about telling us to avoid these 
what are called doubtful disputations. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and um, to give each other a liberty on, on, on things and understand that some people are not as mature as mm -hmm. Christians as others, and we call it weak in the faith. Um, however, no. amen, amen, thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank you, Lord, it's uh, uh, all that matters is uh, who Jesus is and his promise to us, his guarantee. All right, these other things are minor, and we should be able to tolerate different opinions on all these things and our and understand uh, if a weaker brother I uh, think something's important, except we have must learn to draw the line at a certain point. And that is that if someone is telling me that a particular diet, for example, is is uh, necessary, uh, or a particular day of worship is necessary, uh, and, and yet, on one hand, we should say, okay, that's good for you, don't impose it on everybody else. But I will say, even to, for you, if you think that it is something you want to do, I have to ask you why. Why are you doing it? And you know, are, are you doing it because you think that this is a requirement for your salvation? Are you dividing your faith between our Savior and his finished work and his promise and, and also adding uh, some work that you must do to his blood and ruining it. So uh, I think that as much as we want to you know, give liberty to people on these things and, and uh, freedom, I would be careful to test everybody and say, well, okay, understand, you're not required. We don't have to agree on the holidays uh, and diets and a lot of things. But why do you have that position? Do you believe that's necessary for salvation? Mm. If that's the case, then we have a, the, the ultimate serious problem. The, the yeah. holidays thing is really annoying to me because Thank that you. you can't get more legalistic than that. Nope. Um, and people try to justify it by using, don't say you're doing the practice of the heathen and say you're doing it for me and all this other stuff. And, uh, you know, they, they take a mixture of Old and New Testament. And I say, yep. let a man's heart dictate what, because some people, the only time they even have fellowship with their own families are, are during those times. And yep. if it's a time that brings a family and peace together, then leave them alone, you know. And and to, to tie into that real quick, sorry to interrupt, Brother Luke. Um, what Renee just said, they, they use the same scripture in the Bible you know, it's about fastening silver and gold to a tree and, and making it so it doesn't move. That's an idol. It's an idol. That's not a tree, a Christmas tree. No, it's not. But they make it. They try to make it seem like, yeah. oh, there you Jeremiah go. There you go. Yeah. Jeremiah 10. Yeah. There you go. That says right there. No. Uh, unless the person's actually bowing down in front of their Christmas tree, then it doesn't apply. Yeah. That's yeah. about carving idols from the wood. And covering them in precious stones and silver so you can bow before them. Yes, this is exactly I'm right. glad you said that, Jason, because I get that verse thrown at me every holiday season. Oh, me too. Yeah. Every year I can count on. I can count on in my feed when I put my Christmas pictures up. Mm -hmm. you know, just saying, you know, thank you, God, for sending your son to the world. Merry Christmas. Not the Santa part. But I'm, I do put Santa jokes in there sometimes. And so. none of them are were ever Jews. They right. just now, all of a sudden, they always celebrated it. But yeah. just like a new vegetarian, they've got to tell everybody their knowledge. Right. And start oh. forcing everybody else to do the same thing. Oh, that's a good point, Renee. They're out of their yeah. Out of their own pride. That's why yeah, they do right. it. Right. I got yeah. info you don't have. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You're not woke. Renee. I have to ask Hendrix a question. He says, I only bow before my Christmas tree to water it. <laughs> uh, Hendrix, Hendrix, tell us the truth. Now, you're not sneaking a little prayer or worship in the yeah, Christmas tree, okay. are you? <laughs> not hanging garlands around its neck or anything, <laughs> leaving out libations for it. All right. Uh, okay, here's, a, here's an opportunity to argue and divide over something. Uh, I, now I'm going to read the... Uh, New, the Amplified Translation, and uh, those of you who are familiar with my channel, you know that uh, I was a, a staunch advocate of the KJV only position for 25 years, and uh, about seven years ago, I 
left that position. I thought it was just too extreme. And so now I, I use the KJV first. Mm -hmm. I K, I'm a KJV firstist. Yeah. I want to read it first, but I, I do, do want to have the liberty to look at other translations and maybe um, Bible commentaries or maybe the original languages or sure. maybe another another saint like Rene or Cripps. And, uh, you know, any any in, extra input I can get that might be helpful to be, understand, I'm, I'm open to it. OK, so let's read the Amplified and see how they express verse 13. It says, then let us not criticize one another anymore, but rather determine this, not to put an obstacle or a stumbling block or a, a source of temptation in another believer's way. That's pretty much right in line with the other one. It's just, yeah. uh, it might be a little bit easier to understand, but okay. Uh, all right, but I, I to me, the, 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 the real key on, on this whole issue from the beginning of the chapter to now, and I don't think we, we made this, so clear uh, last week, uh, but I think it is important to make this point. You, we, we, we must t ask someone, why is this particular thing important to you? Why do you elevate this like this a particular day or abstaining from a particular food? Why are you doing that? I want to know. <laughs> I hope right. it's not because you think it's necessary for your salvation. If so, then they don't understand and believe our gospel. Right. Okay. All right. Let's go to verse uh, two. Uh, KJV first says, I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Um, all right. Uh, Renee? Yeah, I, I think it's important to mention the context of all of this clean and unclean is in relevance to the food laws of the Jews. Yep. It's all, this is all referencing the context is they were forbidden to eat things without, like with a cloven, without a cloven hoof, right? Mm -hmm. Like pig and camel, they couldn't eat them because they had a cloven hoof. It had to be a regular round hoof. It couldn't be split. And uh, certain birds were unclean, like owls, and uh, couldn't eat certain <laughs> food, scavengers, like Shelf shrimp fish. and lobsters, yeah. and stuff, anything without a spinal cord. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, you also, they had to be killed a certain way, kosher, which I think is good because it's it's the most humane way yeah. of, of, of killing an animal. But uh, this is uh, clearly in reference to those laws and some of the Jews were trying to enforce those food laws upon the Gentiles, which ate pork and shrimp and everything else. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, we see Paul rebuking Peter. One, one of the things I tell uh, the, the Catholics, I'm like, Peter wasn't the head above all the other apostles. He was rebuked sorely by Paul for being a hypocrite and keeping, you know, uh, Jewish food laws in the presence of Jews and then eating like it was fine with the Gentiles, but then separating himself from the Gentiles in the presence of James, uh, Jesus is a half brother and his crew from Jerusalem. So uh, I just wanted to remind everybody that, that this was a thing. And right now the Hebrew roots movement is really trying to put this bondage on a lot of people. They are doing it. They are putting bondage on a lot of people. It's sad. Especially babies, especially babies in Christ. You know, I fell into this when I first got uh, back into uh, scripture. Yeah. Because I don't know if I was saved as a child because I heard his voice all through my life. Right. Or it, it, and fell out of fellowship and he was just, you know, keeping me alive through his grace until mm -hmm. I came back to him. Or if I really did fully get persuaded and got saved later. I don't know. 12 we'll years ago, you know. We'll, but we'll either way, he knew I was his, right? <laughs> right. So, uh, right. Uh, I fell into this. About 11 years ago, I okay. stuck, I got in with the Michael Rude crowd and, oh yeah, and, you know, didn't celebrate uh, Christmas and, you know, uh, didn't want to eat certain things and, right. and I, and had to say Yahshua all the time instead oh of Jesus. Gosh. You could say his name in any language, just the power of the name, uh, depending on which one you're talking about. There's a lot of people named Jesus, Jesus, Yeshua, um, 
you know, because it's just Joshua translated. I mean, well, uh, then it, it, it's not a magic word. It's not how you pronounce it. Well, it's, you can say, it's knowing the right Jesus and the right spirit. Well, you can say anything you want as long as you're inflicting it, say, saying that term onto Jesus. You could literally call Jesus the pizza god of the pizza rolls. Oh, come on. You could he, not. He's, you got His name means salvation. So you should say his name. It just doesn't matter what language That's you say. That's what my it. point is. You okay. can call him anything you want, but as long as you mean that God. The right God. I get what yes. he's saying. Yes. You have to be talking about the right Jesus. Is right. What he's yes, that's absolutely true. Uh, but the uh, Bible does says that we're saved by uh, because of believing in his name. Right. And so his name is important to get right, but it could be pronounced in different languages. Right, God, right. God is bilingual. I mean, he's multilingual. Of course. He can speak. I, I think I, I can't bet you God can speak at least a half dozen languages. Well, I tell the Hebrew rooter. Yeah, you think? I tell the Hebrew rooters, we're not Muslim. Yeah. You know, their God can only speak in ancient Arabic. And that's what their excuse why people just can't really understand yeah. it. All right, let me talk about verse We're not here. Uh, it, it says, uh, I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself. Um, now, we have somebody that commented on last week's video. I apologize to you right now if you're listening, because I don't remember your name and who, exactly who it was. It's somebody new to our congregation, so welcome. And... Um, uh, you made the point that uh, the uh, the dietary that there's no place that the uh, dietary laws uh, were ever changed and 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 said that okay it's good to eat pork or good to eat these things uh, and go ahead and do it um, and you know I let your comment stand you know we don't have to agree on that uh, so I, that, that your comment is on last week's video for everybody to consider but I, I think I better give you another perspective on it now first of all. Um, a lot of people don't understand, just let's call them real babes or novices, uh, beginners in Bible study. They don't even know that there's not just 10 commandments. There's 613 commandments or laws that were given to uh, uh, Moses by God. 10 were written with the finger of God in stone. Uh, the other 603 were written by, by Moses on parchments. And, but they all apply to Israel. You cannot find any place in the Bible where any of these laws of Moses, even the Ten Commandments, apply to the Gentile world, which is the Gentile world just simply means anybody who's not a Jew. Right. It's probably 95, 97, 99 percent of the world's population not being Jew. These things were not given to us. They're given to this one group of people called a peculiar people to, because God had a particular plan for them. So he gave them these stringent rules for his purpose and they were not intended to be applied to us. Mm. Now, how does this uh, apply now in the, in the context here? Well, um, Renee, you, you talked about Peter's vision and this was the first um, indication that something changed for the Jewish people mm. uh, and, and that Peter had this vision uh, about these different foods that were unclean. And, uh, and from the vision, he learned that uh, he, he had to go to Cornelius, a Gentile, and, uh, and answer his questions. And, and, but he learned from the vision, God taught him that these things are not unclean. In fact, you, you should also understand that not only are the foods not unclean, any longer don't consider them uh, unclean. So there is a point in time where that did change for the Jewish people. I think it was a shadow all along of the Gentiles. I think it was uh, the food laws were all a shadow of the Gentiles. How how Israel would be a holy set apart nation. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 yeah that's that, that's the I was trying to say that, and, and there are peculiar people that yeah. he, there are certain things that apply to them to make them unique and. And, and, and God had his reasons for doing it. I don't necessarily understand it all completely, but it is clear that it was not given to the whole world, only to Israel. And it was also came to an end of Peter's vision. So it did come to an end. Doesn't Jews don't have to do this either. And now um, Gentiles never had to follow those laws. And so, uh, so they don't apply to us now and they don't apply to a Jewish believer either. 
But the other thing from Peter's vision that God says, hey, this is not just about food. You, can, you need to understand that you should no longer consider the Gentile people as unclean. Because before that day, the Jewish people could not associate with Gentiles. They could not enter their house. They certainly could not share a meal with them. And uh, so that changed on that day. That's right. Hey, the woman at the well, remember? She yeah. said, how can you, being a Jew, ask me to give you something to drink? Yeah. You're a Jew. You can't associate with me. I'm a, a Gentile Samaritan. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the, the point is, regarding applying all this to verse 14, one, um, if you're a Gentile, you shouldn't even be thinking about this ever applying to you. It never did. It never doesn't now. It never will in the future. Uh, this verse here is talking to really about the Jewish believers who would uh, elevate certain days and have, follow a certain diet. Yep. Uh, um, most of the people uh, at that time who believed in Jesus, they were Jews. And, and, and gradually that, that proportion went from 90, 99.99% Jews to now 99.9% .9 Gentiles. That's yeah. how the, the, the church has changed over, over 2,000 years. Wow. What? But, um, the point is, uh, these laws should don't even think that they apply to you. However, if a person does think that one particular day they want to honor more than another or a particular way of eating, they want to do it. They're free to do that. And if it doesn't, there's no religious reason for them to do it. But my question, again, comes back to why are you doing it? Well, let's be careful because I want to I want to be certain you're not doing it for the wrong reason. Hmm. Okay. If you're doing it because you think this is required for your salvation, you don't understand and believe the gospel. That's right. Okay. Uh, let's read that in verse in, in uh, the Amplified and see how it's, it states it. Verse 14 says, I know and am convinced as one in the Lord Jesus that nothing is unclean, that, that is ritually defiled and unholy <laughs> in, in itself, but nonetheless... It is unclean to anyone who thinks it is unclean. So I, I think these both of these translations are they're really we should just understand that if someone believes it's unclean, it is unclean in their mind. But then, then again, if why? Oh, okay, are you raising this to a level of importance so that it's a salvific issue? No, don't do that. No. Okay, any more on verse 14 before we go on? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, let's go to verse 13 in the KJV, I mean 15 in the KJV. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest thou not charitably, destroy not him with thy meat, for whom Christ died. Brother Cripps. Yeah, so uh, again, I love that Paul does this. He just he gets on something and he keeps making the points over and over again. I think the reason why he did that, he had the same people dealing with him back then that we have today that just don't seem to get it. No matter how many different ways you, you go at it, that these things kept coming back up just like it does for us. Just like there's a purpose for the Hebrew rooters to be around. And that is to, to put the bondage back on people, as Renee said. Um, and these verses are here, and it keeps going at the same point to to hopefully make someone understand. So he did say this. Uh, we talked a little bit about this last week, you know. But so he's hitting the same point. So in the area of meat, you know, he said some people eat meat, some people don't. Some people celebrate holidays, some people don't. So he's making that point again in verse fifteen. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, in other words, if someone has a problem with you eating meat because they're not eating it for whatever. Just like it says in, in 14, they've decided it's unclean for them in their mind. And I agree with Brother Luke. It depends on the reason. And if you're thinking it's, for, it's salvific, then we need to have a conversation. But let's say it's not salvific. Let's say that the, the, it just doesn't agree with them and, 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 and they don't like it or uh, whatever the reason is. So he's saying in verse 15, don't parade the meat out in front of them. You know, Christ died for him as well. If, if, if someone's not eating meat, they're, they're a vegan or wherever, they're, they're not any better or worse than you are. Christ died for the both of you. So don't parade your thing around someone else if you know that they don't, for whatever reason, they don't want to do it. Um, let's not do that. It's, 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 again, the same point, but it's a good one to make. 
Um, and I, I think Paul does a great job here. So, so don't, if, if someone's, if someone doesn't celebrate Christmas, don't flash your, your celebration of Christmas in front of them. If it's meat, don't, you know, don't eat meat in front of them. Don't invite them over your house, knowing that they don't eat meat and then put a steak in front of them. All right. Amen. Renee, what say you? Yeah. Uh, let me go ahead and turn my camera back on so they can see me. Uh, yeah, let me read the verse right here. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest thou not charitably, destroy him, uh, destroy not him with thy meat for whom Christ died. He's saying, you know, just like Jason said, you are fine with eating anything, but that guy is still observing these laws and he feels offense. And he doesn't even want it around him. He feels it's wrong for him to eat it. And it's good that he does not eat it because whatsoever is not a faith is sin. But you eating it in front of him is not respecting that it does offend him. So is the meat really worth doing that to a brother for whom Christ died? No. So, that, yeah, that's, that's, that's all he's saying, I think. All right, then. Uh, we'll move to the verse 16. Um, Let not then your good be evil spoken of, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Thank you. Amen. You're full of joy Amen. and peace. I hope yep. you're full of joy and peace, because if you're not, we got to talk. You yep. Think? All right. Yep. Uh, Renee, what do you think? Yeah. Uh, I, I, let, I, I want to st stop right here. I'll let not then your good be evil spoken of. By the way, uh, it's mentioned here that people that get offended like this they're called weak in the faith and that is not an insult no. to them okay this is not saying they're lesser christian it's saying they haven't fully comprehended yet their liberty in christ and how the flesh doesn't really profit anything it doesn't mean that we're to insult them well you're just weak if you think that's not what that means so we don't put people down by saying they're weak in the faith right but your good, meaning that you, um, it can mean two things. One, uh, it's good that you have freedom and you have understanding that you're not justified by how you eat and that God says you can eat all things with Thanksgiving and it's ple just as pleasing to him. Right. That's good. But that good, evil will be spoken of because you offended a brother. Secondly, you can do tons of good and be hospitable and kind and do charitable things. But if you insist on having your way, and eating something that offends your brother, then you, uh, the good you do, evil can, there, there's a spot on your record, a, a spot on your record. There's something you can be accused of. And so it's just best to avoid that. Yeah. It's just it's just best to um, uh, not offend anyone. Because we're not supposed to give anyone uh, a reason uh saved or unsaved to have legitimate reason to speak evil of us so that the name of god is not blasphemed and i'm guilty of that i i lose my temper sometimes i get in my flesh yeah. that's hard it's hard yeah All right. brother cripps yeah oh, I agree. Way, let, me, let me ask I, nobody has complained about my audio in the chat room or nope. good Cripps. however it's not my fault I, 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 <laughs> until just now my microphone was turned off i don't know how you're hearing me but but my microphone i just turned it on now how could you i do after thousands of videos such a stupid thing and not turn my microphone on well i had uh, i was in the operating room earlier today and this anesthesia it's amazing i can even think and put a sentence together right now so uh, wow, that's I my, that's my alibi, but but apparently I didn't need my microphone turned on. Everybody could hear me anyway, huh? Yeah. No. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Crips. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, I agree with Renee as usual. And um, the only point I want to make is about, uh, well, the first part, let not then your good be evil spoken of. And so so you you don't want people to see something you're doing and have a reason to um go to someone else and say, Hey, you know, Jason's eating meat, you know, and he shouldn't be. Um, 
you know, so if I have an opportunity to not give that, that brother that might be weaker in the faith, any reason to go to someone else and, and be a stumbling block or try to say that I'm being a stumbling block, just avoid it in the first place. But verse 17 makes the, makes the point very, very clear for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. In other words, the things of this world, that's not what the kingdom of God is made of or what is the most important. The most important thing is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And as Brother Luke said, if you're not feeling that, let's talk about it. Not in an accusatory way, but let's find out what, what seems to be blocking that. What, what, why are you not able to feel uh, the joy that comes from realizing that this world is for but a, a short time. It's only a vapor. And that God has promised so many things to us. So, and it's so awesome that we can't even think of it. Uh, no, n no one's thought of the things that God has for us. Um, so, yeah, sometimes this world is, is difficult. But if we keep in mind what he's done for us and the joy uh, that should fill us knowing that he's saved us. We, we've been redeemed by him. Uh, it's very important. So um, we want to have joy. We want to have peace. We want to have righteousness. So it's not about smoking and drinking and eating meat. That's not the point. Um, but he still doesn't want us, uh, anyone to have, um, don't give him a reason to speak evil of you is the point. All right. Uh, I'll take advantage of the Amplified uh, before I speak on it. It says, if your brother is being hurt or offended because of food that you insist on eating, you are no longer walking in love toward him. Ooh. Do not let what you eat destroy and spiritually harm one for whom Christ died. That's good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Uh, did I did I read sixteen or only only through fifteen? You read through eighteen or oh. through seventeen. Sorry. Okay. So uh, on with the amplified further. It says there sixteen says therefore do not let what is a good thing for you because of your freedom to choose be spoken of as evil mm -hmm. by someone else. Yeah. For the, the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, that is what one likes, but of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Okay. Yeah, it's it's easy to understand. And the point is uh, that uh, actually, hey, can we, it, can, is, it, <coughs> is it possible for you? I'm asking you, as though I'm Paul asking you this now. Is it possible that maybe you can make a little personal sacrifice for the benefit of someone else? Yeah. Just, just abstain, you know, even though it's it's a lawful for you um, and um, it, there's no reason why you, you, you have to abstain from that meat or that particular thing you're doing. Uh, but in this case, out of love for your brother, would you mind abstaining from it? Be, be, because it'll help them. They're going to struggle if you if you insist on eating that in front of them. I think that's how I would phrase it. Yeah, in front of them. That's the point. That's the key word there. In front of them, it, it, we certainly. It, it's the idea of eating a steak sandwich in the privacy of your own home, rather than if you if it's someone you work with on your lunch break pulling out a steak sandwich when you know that they've got an issue with it and chomping down on it in front of them. Um, it's a small sacrifice to make, and I think all of us can can make a, a sacrifice like that for sure. Yes. Okay. All right, then. Let's go to uh, verse 18 in the KJV says, For he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace. Mm. And things wherewith one may edify another. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that verse has a broader application. Sure. Uh, go, ahead, go ahead, uh brother, sister Renee, verse nineteen. Yeah, um, I want to say first of all, it, it it doesn't matter whether you're eating it or not; you're acceptable to God. But when you make the sacrifice, like Jason was just saying, 
of giving up something that you enjoy eating because it's offensive to someone else, then that you're serving Christ and you are acceptable to God and approved of men. Mm. And so it's always good to do, to be approved of men believers as well. Mm. Um, because it, it lifts people up. It doesn't spiritually offend someone. Mm. And so it says, so let us always do what brings peace, keeps peace between the brethren. I love it. So we can lift each other up instead of getting, because you know what? It'll turn into a little weird bicker. And that yeah. will be the focus. Yeah. And not Christ. That's right. It takes, it takes it off of Jesus. Anything that takes it off of Christ, shouldn't, it shouldn't be, it's not even worthy to do. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Brother Cripps, verse uh, 18 and 19. I, you know what? I'm, I'm not even going to try to add to that. That, 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 that does it. I'll, I'll just say one thing, edify one another, edify one another. That is so important. Um, you don't realize how much a little edification, how far it goes in a person's life. People struggle every day with, with, you know, with the things of this world, with, you know, paying things on time and got a boss at work that, that's giving you, making it rough for you, or people stabbing you in the back. You may be the person that that takes a second to say to someone, "Hey, man, you're working really hard. I I, I see that you're you're really really working at this thing. Um, I just wanted to tell you, you know, keep keep up the great work. You're doing a great job. That may be make a such a huge difference in that brother or sister's life. You don't even know it. It is." It's so it, it doesn't take much for you to use your tongue for good to edify someone. It's so much easier than tearing someone down with that same tongue. Um, I, I just think it's, it's it's super important. That's all I wanted to add. All right, then I, I, I'll read it in the Amplified, and I, I want to emphasize. Well, first in the KJV, let me take uh, emphasize this word that stands out to me. It says in verse 19, let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace. Mm. Uh, I, I think this particular phrase here has a much broader application for our church. So um, let me read that in the Amplified now and see how they phrase it. Uh, 18 and 19, for the one who serves Christ in this way, recognizing that food choice is secondary is acceptable to god and approved by men so then let us pursue with enthusiasm the things which make for peace and the building up of one another things to which lead to spiritual growth um okay spiritual growth that's the edification uh, but um the peace is what i really want to talk more about uh, I I think that uh, we're we're called to uh, you know you know the creed of our church is that in essentials unity in non essentials liberty in all things charity so uh, what in, in essentials unity the essentials that we we've united it says in essentials unity what what are these essentials that we unite around and we 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 teach it we defend it and we even are dogmatic saying that there is no room for compromise on these things and that is that jesus is eternal god almighty he's god manifested in the flesh as the son of god jesus christ say god and savior uh, he's not merely a prophet not merely a great re religious or moral teacher. He's God. Uh, we, we insist, we're dogmatic. You must understand and agree to that, uh, or you cannot be in this congregation because you're, you're arguing against the most fundamental uh, doctrine. Uh, the, the next that we unify, this next dogma is that salvation is not earned by our own efforts, by any religious efforts on our part. Our religious efforts to change our life, get bad out of our life, increase good in our life, all those efforts are meaningless for salvation. And we must not put any faith in our contribution. Right. 
we must have our faith completely and only in what Jesus accomplished for us on the cross and his promise of eternal life and nothing that we do contributes to it. That's right. Uh, and the, you know, the final point is that uh, this promise of eternal life, this is the eternal security. It's the guarantee that, that it's fundamental to uh, the gospel that the good news is that, that uh, uh, I'm guaranteed eternal life by Jesus. It's settled. It's irrevocable God, by God or by, by me. And there's nothing that can change it. Uh, that, I didn't get it because of me. I'm not going to lose it because of me. It's entirely because it has promise and it's settled. Mm. Uh, that's these are the three core doctrines um, uh, of Christianity. These are what we unite around and defend. And then things like all these other things you're discussing here. The, uh, you know, uh, we can have disputes uh, as long as it's done in charity, as long as we dispute with love and kindness and respect and, and don't get in the flesh. Uh, but there are many times, though, that for the sake of peace, if it is not regarding the core doctrines, if it is an offshoot of that or, or something else entirely, uh, but not the core doctrines, then it's best for us to try to find some way to uh, get this, this peace and not be so and not be dogmatic, insist, and try to prove our point against each other. You see that all the time in our congregation, that um, we, we, uh, we express a different viewpoint on something. Every week you, hear, you see that on the Sunday program, and yet if two or three of us have different opinions on a subject, never once do you see any of us ever take it a step further and try to prove the other person wrong publicly to win an argument. No, what we do is we, for the sake of peace, we let it go. We say, okay, we're all free to accept the different viewpoint. Everybody's free to consider the different viewpoints. You're, you have freedom. It's a non-essential question. So for the sake of peace, we do not try to force our opinion on, on others. Mm. That's essential. Otherwise, we, can, we would not have, uh, the, the unity would crumble. So that verse here, uh, when it says, for uh, let us pursue with enthusiasm the things that make for peace. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, uh, that's the broader application. It's not just regarding diet. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, May I add one more thing, Brother Luke? Go ahead, please. Just real quick. Um, some uh, Mark in the chat said that it's much easier to tear someone down than it is to lift someone up. And I get where you're coming from, but they actually did a study on the muscles in the face. And it takes more muscles to frown, to screw your face up in a frown and, and turn, your, turn your lips downward than it does for a person to smile. Uh, so God made our face to smile. He also made our hearts to express joy and to edify each other. And we get a joy out of that. Of course, you don't do it for your own edification. You do it for your brother or sister's edification. But when you do that, you recognize what it does for you when you do that. It, it changes the physiology that God made inside you. He made your body a certain way to react emotionally to things being said that are edifying to you. It's good for your body. Smiling and lifting someone up is good for you as well. So it may seem easier to rip someone apart. I, I think I understand where you're coming from, Mark. You're saying that our, our spirit, I, I don't want to assume, but our spirit, that our dead spirit inside us, that flesh, it is easier to rip someone apart. Amen. I would agree with that. But we don't have to choose that. We can choose the easier way. Uh, that match the muscles that God made in our face to smile at someone and lift them up and edify them rather than tear them down. I thank you, Brother Luke, for giving me the time. Yeah. I wanted to add that. Well, I, I'll give you my own viewpoint on your point there. And that, uh, again, um, I risk coming off as arrogant, prideful. But I'm going to say it anyway because I think it's a, it's a, it's a point for everyone to consider. Uh, it's actually easier for me to do the right thing rather than the wrong thing. And in, in the way you're in this scenario, you presented to, to uh, get in the flesh, 
and uh, or want to do someone harm or how did you phrase it what was that how was it phrased uh, it's easier in your flesh to to tear someone down than yeah. Now it's not easier for me to tear someone down than to to be so love and kindness. Right. It's easier for me to do love and kindness. Mm -hmm. It's hard for me to tear them down. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I, I'm I think that the Holy Spirit has just changed me. And there was a time where I was very quick to get into the flesh and get angry and get ugly, get get vile, profane. Uh, uh, that's not my default now. I don't naturally go to that anymore. If I do get like that, begin to get like that, uh, I, I would, I'd actually have to struggle to continue it because it immediately, I, I, I'm aware of it and I stop it. Yeah. So, um, um, okay. There's my, uh, my, uh, like Paul says, he, dare I, how do you say it? Dare I boast or something like that. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, Renee, any more before we go on? No, no, go ahead. Okay. Okay. All right. So back to the KJV. Uh, let's first go to verse 20. For meat destroy not the work of God. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. Yes. All right. You're ready to go, Crips. Go ahead. I am ready to go. So the very same scenario I talked to you about, the guy that goes to work and is eating with a buddy that doesn't eat meat, to eat a steak sandwich in front of him, knowing that he does that, Paul's saying that is an offense. If you if you do that, knowing that someone doesn't eat meat and you're purposely chomping down on a, on a steak sandwich in front of him, you're doing exactly what Paul's trying to get us not to. Because that is an offense. If you if you're doing something that's evil in front of someone to someone else, you're doing it in front of them. Then you're being offensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You uh, know. You know what else that uh, Luke? What? You know what else that can mean? It, let's say somebody is a uh, has been an observant Jew their whole lives, and then they realize, hey, I don't have to keep these food laws anymore. Right. However, however. They've never eaten shrimp or whatever. And they still have some conviction that, oh, I don't know if I should do this. Don't eat it. Don't eat it. Because if you can't realize that everything is good and, and God's word, he blesses it, don't eat it. Because now you're eating with offense. Mm -hmm. You're not eating it with Thanksgiving. And whatsoever is not a faith is sin. Yes. So don't. If you have a fear of eating certain foods, don't eat them. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul talks about it elsewhere, too, about if you know that these gent, let's say you're witnessing to a Gentile family, they're not saved, yeah. right? Yeah. And they offer their meat before their house idol. Mm -hmm. Well, you know an idol's nothing. Yep. You can pray over your food, bless it, and you know it ain't going to do nothing to you, but... But there are some that fear that there's power in the blessing of that idol and are scared to eat it. Yep. Now it's offensive if yep. they did. So there, there's, there's that too. Never do anything against your own conscience, even if it is allowed. If you think it's wrong, don't do it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, this, this makes me think about, okay, what is the issue with with you? I'm, if I'm talking to the person right now that says, I don't want to do that. Uh, I can't do that. Well, are you telling me that you really cannot skip a meal? Or you cannot actually uh, abstain from a particular thing in a meal one, one time for the benefit of someone else? You cannot make that little sacrifice as, as we're learning in the scriptures that this is what we're, we're told we should be doing. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, make a little sacrifice. Yeah. Uh, and, and guess what? If you don't have the meal or if you abstain from at least some things, it's, it's it, I would call that fasting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the Bible tells us there's a lot of reasons for us to fast. And a couple of years ago, I adopted fasting routinely. I, I fast on a regular basis. And I, I know it is hard to fast the first day and yeah. the second day and the third day. But by the third, fourth, fifth day, then learning how to fast, it becomes very, very easy. But it is hard. The idea when I first started doing the fasting, the idea of actually skipping one meal was seemed like monumental to me. 
it was really, I don't know if I can do this. Can I go a few hours without the meal I normally get? But so we, we should be willing, even if it is a struggle, to make a little temporary sacrifice, uh, just consider it, well, I'm fasting right now. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of benefits, spiritual and, and uh, physiological benefits from, from doing that. Amen. All right, uh, let's go to the... Did I read that in the Amplified yet? No, sir. Okay. Uh, yeah, I like what, to hear it. It's verse what? Not, uh, 20? 20, yeah. Okay. Uh, do not, for the sake of food, tear down the work of God. All things indeed are ceremonial clean, um, but they are wrong for the person who eats and offends another, uh, another's conscience in the process. Just 20, not 21, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, do, do not, for the sake of food, tear down the work of God. Yeah, that's another thing. It's kind of like a... Come on, it's just food. It's just one meal. Is it asking too much for us to abstain from something in one meal? Do we have to have that this particular meal, or can we make a little sacrifice for the good of someone? Right. Else? Right. Okay. Uh, now let's go to the KJV verse uh, uh, twenty-one. Mm -hmm. It is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth or is offended or is made weak. Renee? Wine thing, because a lot of independent fundamental Baptists believe that it, it, it is a sin to even consume alcohol and yep. that the wine Jesus drank was just fruit juice. I do not. Uh, nope. uh, because they accused him of being a wine bibber, which means he's a drunkard. Yeah. And so I believe that it was just common to drink fermented drink especially in the desert at that time mm -hmm. um and uh i am not offended uh, i don't think it's wrong to drink alcohol as long as you're not a drunkard yep um so there are some people that do feel offended by alcohol and my pastor is one of them okay and so i would never drink and i would i tell him i do i'm not a hypocrite but i would never serve alcoholic wine at dinner if he was visiting me right and that's a perfect example. He said, you know, you might have the freedom, but it is not good that you drink alcohol or you eat certain things that could offend your guest or someone you were in the presence of. Yeah. Never good. All right. Brother Cripps. Yeah. So, again, Paul's just trying to drive this point home so everybody understands it, even in the cheap seats, to make sure that they get what he's trying to say. Which simply is what, it, what whatever it is, whatever the item is, whether it's a holiday or or meat or drink, whatever it is, don't do it in front of your brother in order to offend them. Just don't do it. And the reason why we don't do it is because we want to focus on the other things, right? Righteousness and peace and the joy that comes from the Holy Spirit. So he 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 gives the things that we shouldn't do, and then but also he gives us the reason why we shouldn't do it, and he keeps going back at it again and again and again because it's still an issue for people today. It was an issue for people back then. It kept coming back up. That's why uh, Paul deals with anything. He had people coming to him and saying, "Oh, this brother's drinking wine. This brother's not supposed to eat meat." It's like what? But he's making the point, don't do it when it's an offense to someone else. He's just double, doubling down on the same point. All right. let's, let's, hey, let's... somebody's mic is cutting out. Sharon said somebody, all right, saying this is amazing content and distraction from mic cutouts. Honey, who, whose mic's cutting out? Yeah, is it mine? Is it mine? Can everybody hear me, or is there an audio problem with with me? I, I can hear you. fine. I, that's why I was asking. I haven't heard a mic cut out. You've yeah. been able to hear me. Yeah. Well, okay. Okay. let us well, know. Let us know. Okay, everybody else is saying seems fine to me. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go to verse uh, twenty-two uh, in the KJV. Hast thou faith? Have 
it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which are which he alloweth. Okay, uh, Rene, and translate that for me, please. <laughs> I, I use that often. Happy is the one who I was a happy is a man who does not condemn that which he allows. Uh, yeah, that that's what I was talking about earlier. Doing something against your own conscience because then it condemns. There's no point in feeling guilty about something and doing it anyway, because now it's sin to you. So if you're going to do it, be completely free. If you're going to eat that meat or have a glass of wine, really be free about it. Know that it's okay for you. And you are the only one that is, has an issue with it. And if you have an issue with it, don't do it until you don't have an issue with it. You see what I'm saying? Like, don't do anything against your own conscience. But once you are free and you realize that you're not abusing anything, you don't, you're not offending anyone else, then you can be happy because you're allowing the freedom in this area. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Matthias, brother, uh, he, he says everyone's audio sounds great to him. Okay, great. So, uh, whoever uh, said that there's an issue, uh, maybe it's, it's it's on your end, apparently. Uh, okay, let me read that in the uh, Amplified. Perfect. Verse 22 says, the faith which you have that gives you freedom of choice have as your own conviction before God. Just keep it between yourself and God, seeking his will. Happy is he who has no reason to condemn himself for what he approves. Mm. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? It is wonderful. Wow. Well, Brother Cripps? Yeah, so using the Amplified to, to, to make the point, it's saying you have the freedom of choice. So um, if you decide not to eat meat, this is beautiful. If you decide not to eat meat, it's also something you don't have to go parade around in front of other people and say, oh, by the way, I don't eat meat. I decided that, you know, even though I have the freedom to do it, I still am deciding not to do it. I know I've got the freedom to, to celebrate Christmas, but I'm deciding not to do it. And they, they're telling other people about it. Let it be between you and God. Whatever it is you decide to do or not do, let it be between you and God. Very, very simple. And that would be easy. It would keep you out of trouble for sure. Then you wouldn't be an offense to anyone else. You just keep it between you and God, what you do and what you don't do, where it comes to uh, whether you eat meat or don't eat meat, etc. cetera. All right. Um, so... Uh yeah, the way it's phrased makes it real easy for me to understand. I, uh, Renee, mm -hmm. I, you love the verse. A lot of times, I, I've noticed in your videos, Renee, you, you teach on a verse that I don't really even understand that well, and you seem to like, wow, no problem, man. It's just really, you, you get it. You, maybe, maybe you should be back in the 16, 1600s and uh, <laughs> that English because it seems to come easier to you. Okay, but it says here. And for my benefit, this easy English says, the faith which you have that gives you freedom of choice. See, you know, there's a lot of verses we could go to. But of course, there's that verse that not, uh, everything is lawful. Not everything is expedient or mm -hmm. beneficial. You know, everything is permissible. Not everything is beneficial. I don't, know, I don't remember in the KJV exactly how it's expressed. But the idea is that there's um, there's nothing uh, that you have to say, uh, determine it is, uh, okay, uh, I cannot do that because it's against the law and I'm not allowed to do it. Um, but keep in mind that with that freedom comes the consequences of your decisions. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, they, a lot of people think that, um, I disagree with very broadly, almost all uh, Bible teachers uh, on this question here. And that is when I believe that when, the, when I uh, say that the Bible says uh, Jesus is the, is the propitiation for our sins mm -hmm. and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, I give a complete hyper extreme grace and I apply that as fully as I can. And I say, look, the sin problem has completely been resolved we do not have a sin problem between man and god not 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 us as believers 
And even the non-believers, Jesus paid for their sins too. There's no reason why they cannot have this relationship with God. The sin barrier has been removed for everybody. They don't have eternal life. They didn't receive the gift of eternal life, and we have. That's the real difference between us. Uh, but when I when I say that the uh, <coughs> the sin problem has been resolved completely, um, uh, there are uh, people that think that uh, somehow we still have to have um, some kind of consequences of our sin from God. I, you know, in Hebrews, when it talks about the chastisement of God, I believe that's more of a, a picture of God, like a shepherd taking his staff and steering people through the sheep in the right direction. He's, he's not beating them. No. Punish them. He's steering them in the right direction. As yeah. Uh, I consider the chastisement because I don't see God as cruel in any way, particularly to his children. And uh, so I don't think this idea of any kind of chastisement being a punishment by God, or even um, for the lost people having some kind of punishment for sin, because I take this propitiation to mean that there is no more consequences for our sins from God. However, sin brings its own consequences. Yep. <laughs> you're not going to get away with your sins. No. If you do, if you're a, if you're a liar, you're going to get caught. You're going to lose your friendships and reputation. If you're a thief, you you'll get caught eventually, and you maybe you'll go to jail. If you're an adulterer and and, uh, and cheating on your spouse, and you you may have all kinds of problems. Maybe diseases, maybe uh, unplanned pregnancies, or divorce, and single families. All these things are complications and consequences that come as a result of bad decisions to sin. Yeah. God's not doing it to us. Because uh, now I don't remember what verse we were talking about that made me say that. <laughs> well, I don't even know how that's relevant. <laughs> was it relevant or at all? It was relevant, yeah. Okay. Um, okay, uh, yeah, so let me read the verse and Maybe I can figure out why I said it. Uh, the faith you have that gives you freedom of choice. Okay, yeah. That's, that's why I said it. Yeah. With this freedom does come a responsibility we do. We will suffer consequences, but I want everybody to know it's not God punishing you that's causing these things. It's you've done it to yourself with the bad decisions. Okay. Um, and then the rest of it says um, you, know, you have freedom of choice. Obviously, we have free will then. There you go, Calvinist. Consider that. Mm -hmm. Have as your own conviction before God. Just keep it between yourself and God. Seeking his will. Yeah, this is not something we need to, like, try to impose on everybody else. No. You know, if a person does have these strong convictions about abstaining from certain things and living a certain way, that uh, even though they're free, if they feel that they're convicted to, to do it, fine. But just keep it between you and God, it's saying. Mm -hmm. All right. Any more on that before we go to the next verse? No, sir. Okay. You see, Renee, do you see how respectful Brother Cripps is to me, calling me sir? Yes, he is. Yeah, that's so nice. Awesome. <laughs> verse, 20, verse 23 says, And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith, uh, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Uh-oh. Yeah, all it. those people that don't sin anymore. Yep. Yeah. Uh, by the way, this is one of those verses, Brother Luke, where it could have been a better translation of a word because okay. I've seen the word damned in a couple of places and people assume that means damned to hell and it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as I told you before we started, I, I, I'm going to do a, a, a video of my own uh, on this uh, question of doubt and, and, and these things that we have been all discussing uh, probably tomorrow. But this verse here uh, certainly um, would be part of this conversation here. So, Renee, uh, you go ahead first on verse 23. Yeah, it's just a damned. Sh I believe the word damned should be replaced with condemned. Condemned because he is he is going to be under condemnation if he does something against his own conscience. If there is any doubt that God will be displeased with your actions regarding uh, drinking or eating, then you should abstain from it. Yep. You 
you need to have a clear conscience knowing that God it does not care and you have complete liberty on what you eat and drink. Yeah. But if you have any doubt about that at all, abstain from it because you're going to drink or eat con you know condemnation to your own spirit. You don't want that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, all right, Brother Cripps. All right, there's there's three words that might help people understand the way that I see this. One is moral, another is amoral, and another is immoral. So a moral thing is something that, for whatever reason, that I'm, I'm talking about the individual, a, a person decides on moral grounds that they're going to not do one thing or another thing. That's something they should avoid, and Paul agrees with that. If you if you decide on moral reasons not to eat meat, then don't eat it. If you if you do it, and you feel it's it, it's a moral decision for you not to eat meat, then you're doing it as an offense. You're doing it, and there's condemnation. I I, I agree with Renee on the word damned. Uh, I mean, the, it it just is makes me wince a little bit. But condemnation works in this passage as well. So if it's an amoral decision, that means you don't care either way. You, you don't you don't feel bad about it if you do eat it. You don't feel good about it if you do eat it. It, it doesn't really matter to you. It's an amoral decision. Um, if it's if it's uh, immoral to you, it's detestable. Um, it, it affects it affects you in a negative way. Um, then obviously don't do that. So uh, those three things are a good way to to explain. And I believe that God looks at things in that way. Some some things God decides that these things are immoral for us, and those things are listed in Scripture. The things that God would con still consider immoral for us. There are other things that He He uh, approves of. There 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 are moral reasons why to do it, and there are things that God doesn't. Uh, it's not that He doesn't care. It just doesn't matter to Him either way. Um, like what color you might wear, a uh, dress or a shirt. Uh, if you if, if you stand in front of your claws and say, God, what color do I need to wear? Are you going to be mad if I wear red? Are you going to be mad if I wear blue? It's probably an amoral decision for God. He does care about the details in our life, but that's just an example. Um, so, But if you do any of these things, uh, he that doubteth is condemned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. If you're eating of faith, then you don't have anything to worry about. If you're in faith, then it's not sin, but the opposite is. All right, thank you. Um, okay, we are in Romans chapter 14. We started tonight with verse 13. And when we got to verse 14, you heard me go on a kind of a rant and tirade about something. And now we're on the last verse, uh, 23. And to me, that verse is related to verse 14 and the point I was trying to make. And the point I made, I won't, if, you, if you missed the beginning when I did it, I hope you go back and watch it and get, I'll, I'll synthesize it down simply. And that is that if people are making a big deal about a dietary law or a holiday or any of these things, you know, you can make a list of a hundred things that they could be making a big deal about and say, these things are really important and you know, I'm doing this. Well, the, the question we should uh, ask, actually, we should have alarms going off and, and, and concern. Well, I said, we need to find out why they are, are following that. Why are you saying that worshiping on a particular day? Mm -hmm. Is, is required is necessary is important to you are you are you telling me that it is necessary for salvation and that we need to get to the root of that problem now if they're saying no it's not necessary for salvation it's necessary for me because uh i believe god's directing me to do it well he's free to do it that's what this whole chapter is about mm -hmm. but i think we have an obligation when we hear this this uh these kinds of things we need to find out what, what is the problem why are you uh making this an, an issue yeah uh, if it's dietary or holidays or let me read verse 23 and apply it now um uh, okay it says this is in the 
the amplified says, but he who is, un by the way, uh, he doesn't use damned and amplified. You're probably modern translations, it, it doesn't, it, it uses condemned. You're, you're right, Rene. But uh, even if it's damned, I, I, I'm taking the same position. But he who is uncertain about eating a particular thing is condemned if he eats because he is not acting from faith. Whatever is not from faith is sin. Whatever is done with doubt is sinful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, this person here that this verse is talking about, the, the rule I've said, let's follow this rule. Let's find out what is the point you're making here. Uh, if, if you have this, uh, this uh, question of, of okay, uh, I don't think... Uh, I think I've got to do this. I've got to follow this dietary law. As I said, if they say, if, if I ask why, and they say it's because I, you have to do it to be saved, then it, it is a matter of uh, condemnation and salvation because they don't believe the gospel. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're doubting or not believing the fact that uh, these things are not part of our, our gospel. Right. Following dietary law, that's not part of it. If they do think that that's part of it, uh, then they have doubted or not believed the gospel. So that's how I would uh, apply this, and that's why we need to we need to always get to the bottom of it with everybody. I think it's I'd say it's even a duty on our part when we encounter someone with any of these positions, saying they won't eat uh, seafood or they won't eat shrimp and lobster. Wow, you're really missing out. But you know, okay, why? Why aren't you? Why won't you eat that? We need to find out, and if they, and if it's a salvation if it issue, they're doing it because it's a condition for salvation. Then this verse here would apply to, to them. That's how I, I would interpret it. Um, okay, we've got uh, uh, any more on um, verse twenty three before we, we go. I think we can cover go a little further into the next chapter unless you guys are anxious to sum it up. I'm all right. Okay, Ray. Any, any more on um, verse 23? No, mm -mm. I, th I think I think we got that whole subject pretty covered. Okay. Now, Brother Cripps, you can see I put the, also the uh, chapter 15 part of it uh, here for you. To look yes, at. sir. Thank you. Okay. So now we'll move on to the next chapter. But let everybody be aware that um, chapter divisions, even numbering of verses, were not in the original writings. So sometimes people place a great... Um, significance on a beginning or an ending of chapters, but sometimes a thought uh, from one chapter is still continued into the next chapter. And Thank you, Luke. You took the words out of my mouth on this one. When I read the next verse, I was like, I hope they know there wasn't a chapter when this was originally written because it's talking about what he's already talking about. And it's good to say that because now we've got another connotation of the word infirmity. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, uh a lot of people put a, a too much of a um, 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 make it an issue of these chapter divisions and stuff. And we need to understand that if you can remove those as you read it and, and not factor that into your interpretation, it'd be wise. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, 15 verse one in the KJV. Uh, oops. Where is it? Okay. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Yeah. Okay, Renee, you're raring to go. Yeah, yeah. I was saying earlier that Paul calls when people put these restrictions and bondage rules on themselves about meat and alcohol and stuff, that they're just weak in the faith. But it's not an insult. It's just where they are. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm so glad they use the word infirmities here because – you know, a lot of people say I glory in my infirmities, meaning like when I'm sick, I still praise God because his strength's perfected my weakness. I see it further than that. I see it even when I have a weakness, like a character flaw. Mm. I really rest in God's grace. And I've said before, I believe people that are struggling with fleshly habits trust in the grace of God more than those who are self-righteous and think they don't sin anymore. Amen. And I am so glad I am hyper aware of God's standards. Uh, Brother Luke calls it easy legalism. These people really think they don't sin or they get days where they don't sin. 
They, yeah. they don't understand that they don't read Matthew 5 as Jesus showing them the real standards of the law mm -hmm. and all the things like even a foolish thought is considered sin. Mm -hmm. they, they don't get it. They really think they're good. And I, I even say, stand next to Jesus and tell me you don't sin. Right. You can compare your, I, I want to, he didn't even have a wicked thought. So when this thing says bear each other's infirmities, uh, I, I believe it's our weaknesses too. It's not just, it could be a character flaw or a habit or anything. We are supposed to help each other through these things. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the more I'm reminded of my, uh, how short I fall of God's glory in my flesh, the more I lean on his grace. Yeah. You know, so I'm going to glory in my infirmity. I'm going to glory in the fact that I am weak. There is no chance that I will be deceived enough into thinking I'm good now. Amen. And I will glory in that because I know that it, it's only his strength and his grace that I'm saved. It, that's it. That's all I can glory in the cross of Christ. And that's it. Yep. You know, so uh, I'm so glad the word infirmity is used here. But in the context, uh, I'm so glad uh, Brother Luke mentioned, hey, the chapter was not there. This is this is a continuation of the same uh, thought he was having in the last verse of the last chapter. We then, in talking about uh, not eating things that offend other people, we then that are strong, meaning we know our liberty. Yep. We know that as not God is not displeased if we eat anything with Thanksgiving. It doesn't matter what it is. Amen, amen. We that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. Mm -hmm. See? And not to please ourselves. So we're going to bear that. And like Brother Luke said, really, you can't do the sacrifice of abstaining from like a food you like for your brother so he's not offended. Mm -hmm. It's his weakness. Let, let it's... You know it's a weakness, so you need to be more spiritually mature in this for him. Lest you sin because you're not putting someone else's needs before your own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Lil Engstrom asked if I will explain what um, propitiation means. I, I, I think I did when I was talking about it. I'll, I'll talk more about it, but first, Brother Cripps on this verse here. Verse sure, I'll just... I'll Yep, I'll be real short. Uh, uh, Renee put a good point on it. So, um, so then again, it goes back to the same example uh, that I used earlier about the the guys at work. One guy knows that the other guy doesn't eat uh, meat, so he purposefully doesn't eat his steak sandwich in front of him. He goes off and eats it somewhere else. Um, so, if someone else has a problem with it, they're they're weaker. Uh, in that area. And again, as Renee pointed out, weakness is not an insult, it just they're at a different place. They don't uh, have the same liberty that we might have, then it's okay. We should be willing to not eat the steak sandwich in front of them, be willing to do that, just knowing that they've got a problem with it. It's so simple. And don't do that to please ourselves. Don't do that so we can say, yeah, I know my the guy I work with doesn't eat meat, so I didn't eat this, my sandwich in front of him and tell other people about it to, to make yourself look better. Just do it. Keep it between you and God. God knows what you give up for, for him in his sight. He knows. He knows everything. He knows you better than you know yourself. He knows all the thoughts that you've ever had in your mind before you even think them. Um, so keep it between you and God. And again, this is something that does make you feel good. It makes you feel good when you know that someone else has struggled with struggles with something, and and you don't you don't make a big deal out of it, but but you uh, give them grace in a certain area. Um, I'll go further than that and say, and and you can also uh, you know Luke was saying, like in finding out why a person is abstaining from something, and it'd be okay to ask them that, find out why, and then you know come alongside them in whatever way you can. Uh, maybe God would use you to uh, to plant a seed in them and show them the liberty that they have in Christ. Not in a way to, to convict them or condemn them or anything, but in a way of saying, yeah, I understand where you're coming from. Um, I particularly have liberty when it comes to that. And you can too. You know, it could be conversation. Um, 
again, without any condemnation or, or uh, causing any strife. Uh, but come alongside uh, weaker weaker people, and not for your own your own pride or for pleasing yourself, but uh, just because uh, God says to. All right. I moved you guys in the kitchen with me because Jim wants chicken nuggets. So. Uh, uh, okay. Um, all right. Uh, by the way, in the Amplified translation, um, it, in the beginning of a chapter and sometimes in the middle or all way down in a chapter, it, it will put in a subtitle. When you see any of these subtitles or titles of chapters, you should also know that these are not scripture. These are words that are put there by the tr translators and, and mm -hmm. the publishers a lot of times to give you the kind of the, the color theme of that particular uh, portion of scripture coming up. So this this uh, chapter it starts off with the the subject title self denial on behalf of others. So that's what that's what it's been talking about in the previous chapter. It's, need to talk about now are you willing to deny yourself and make a little sacrifice uh you know uh, because uh, someone else uh, it will benefit them you know they're they're not as knowledgeable and mature about something uh and uh so until you can uh, maybe teach them and they can grow an understanding about these things mm -hmm. uh you know just don't don't uh cause it cause a problem by uh by insisting on having your way just go ahead and concede the point to them but as Brother Cripp said, and I keep repeating, uh, uh, it, it, we should have a, alarms going off and a concern as to why why do you feel that way? What's the uh, the reasoning behind it? You abstaining from this or, or following this particular rule? Um, and if the, if we do discover that they believe that is a, a, a requirement for salvation, mm -hmm. that we do need to stand up to to them and for their sake. The microwave or something you're, you're not you don't apparently you don't understand the gospel mm -hmm. or, or or you don't believe the gospel uh, and, and you have to go over the gospel with them because if they think that salvation is somehow hinged to them following these rules then we've discovered that they don't really believe correctly mm -hmm. uh, all right so uh, Oh, um, the question from Lil Engstrom, uh, explain propitiation. Uh, it's sim it just simply, it's a word means, if I had to condense it down, I'd say paid in full, sufficient payment. What Jesus did on the cross, his death on the cross has served as a sufficient payment. God is satisfied with what Jesus did for us and now sin is no longer an issue between you and God because Jesus satisfied the requirement that God had. Perfect. So that's it's just paid in full. Nothing else needs to be done. And that's 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 important to understand that. Otherwise, you won't really know. Uh, you can you can understand that you, you get eternal life because of, of believing in Jesus for it. But it won't make any sense uh, in the end because you you'll you won't understand well, what about sin? What about repentance? What about my changing my life? And all these, it, you can be confused thinking that all these things are still relevant when that they're not relevant anymore. It's finished. It's Jesus said it's finished. And so propitiation says is don't be concerned about your sin regarding salvation. It does not factor into your salvation because it's uh, Jesus sufficiently made the payment. So don't worry about that. There's a saying that I want to promote. I, it's not original by me, but salvation is not a sin issue. Salvation is a son issue. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. I like that one. Okay. Uh, so let's go to verse two. Uh, now, Renee, uh, you're probably getting dinner ready, so we can we can finish up now. I know it's uh, uh, we usually quit about uh, 11 p.m. your time. So let's. Oh. Show. What? That's okay. Yeah. Okay. So we'll pick up. Microwave and kept breaking out because the microwave's on. <laughs> we'll, we'll pick up with uh, chapter fifteen, verse two, next time. So let's uh, let's take some time now to kind of summarize our our thoughts on the, uh, the the discussion tonight. Renee, why don't you go ahead? Yeah, it seems to me this is all about confirming our freedom in certain things like eating and drinking, mm -hmm. and but although everything, well, the gentleman in there. Um, gave us another verse um 
about how all things are permissible if eaten with Thanksgiving. Mm. All, all creatures are good. Um, here's your chicken nuggets, baby. Oh. Um, hey, guys. <laughs> so to me, it's about our liberty we have in these fleshly issues. But again, just like we don't use that liberty for an occasion to the flesh, we're free. We've been set free. We are saved and secure. Only use not that liberty as an occasion to the flesh. Same thing here. Don't use that freedom you have in meat and drink to think it's still okay to offend someone that maybe is weaker than you in the faith and doesn't understand. Like, for instance, let's say there's a saved Hebrew reader. You know that that doesn't justify anybody and that God allows us to eat everything. But if that person is at a weak place in his faith where he doesn't realize the full freedom he has to eat whatever he likes, we should not eat it so that he's not offended. Right. Since Christ sacrificed so much for us, we can certainly sacrifice eating something or drinking something we want to keep that person uh, comfortable so that they're not spiritually hurt right. by it. Mm -hmm. And that's right. what it seemed like this was all about. Our liberty, but not abusing it in any way that would hurt someone. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Very good. And uh, Brother Cripps? Yeah, I would agree with that. And uh, the, overall, again, is uh, Paul just trying to drive this point home so that everybody understands. Um, it, it, if a brother or sister is struggling with something, if they're weaker, they don't understand their liberty, don't don't aggravate them, edify them. Uh, there's no reason to to uh, parade things around in, in, in front of someone when you know that they struggle with it. Um, I, I personally know people that do this all the time. They find out... Uh, someone else has a problem with something and they keep egging it on over and over and over again. I've never understood that. Um, I, I think it's because they have a flesh issue for sure. Um, so a brother or sister in Christ, uh, we don't have to do that at all. In fact, instead of doing that, um, Paul's telling us to, to hold them up, lift them up, edify them. Amen. And I, would, I would much rather do that. I would much rather spend my time edifying a brother or sister because it's hard out there, y'all. Yes. It's hard, and it's going to get harder. Um, this world is getting going to be more and more difficult. We're going to, it's going to be filled with hate. Biblically speaking, we're headed in that direction. And there are people out there that think our job as Christians is to bring in the kingdom of Christ, that we have some kind of power that we're supposed to take over the evil forces and whatnot. And that's a completely different subject, but I'm 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 saying that that's not that's not biblical. Only Jesus will bring His kingdom. He'll bring it to us, um, not not the other way around. So, well, biblically his speaking, timing, His timing, not because we expedited it. Right. We we can't expedite it, and we can't take over uh, Satan's world. We can't do that. That's what right. We, what we can do is lift each other up in hard times. We can come alongside other people. Um, knowing that the times are evil, you know, that's been made very, very clear. And we can do that starting with the small things like meat and holidays. So if we can, if we can grasp that, then when something is a little bit more serious and it's a, it's a bigger deal to us, if we could do it in the small things, we can do it in the bigger things. So the point is it, it, to me is edification and to, to, to um, keep it between us and God. God knows every the reason why you do everything that you do. So keep it between you and God. It doesn't have to be a public thing. And if you know someone struggles, just don't do it in front of them. It's really, really simple. As Brother Luke said, you can abstain from a meal. If you if, if someone comes over and a meal's prepared and you find out they don't eat meat, um, you can whip, whip a salad up for them or something and go ahead and eat a salad that night. It, it's no problem. Or you can eat a salad and you're still hungry later. After they leave, you can eat your steak sandwich. No problem. That's what I would do. I love steak. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Um, I would say that um, um, I conclude that the Apostle Paul is much more patient and thorough than I am. Mm. And, and I am more impulsive. Because what I see happening in these verses here, starting with verse 13, no problem. We get to verse 14, and I'm all, I'm all disturbed. 
And I, I feel the need to ask the question, why do you have this position? What makes you think that the, uh, you need to have a particular holiday or a particular diet? Uh, I, I am immediately suspicious that maybe they don't have faith completely in Jesus and they're dividing their faith between Jesus and dietary laws. Mm -hmm. So I immediately reacted to that and made it an issue in the conversation. Paul, I believe, he, uh, he takes the time to give us nine verses, uh, elaborate more fully on this point that he's making about this freedom and how we are to deal with the person before he makes the statement that I made, my reaction. And I think his his statement in, in verse 23, the way I interpret it, is the, what is bringing to the front the issue that I said. Okay, now, I, now that I made the point that you're free to have these positions and we should be tolerant about people having these positions and, and uh, if someone is weaker in the faith and they don't understand everything necessarily, but... Paul says here in verse 23, I think what I was trying to say, and okay, he says, but, but, okay, but, you know, Renee, we always say no ifs, ands, and buts, you know, that changes everything, right? Right, right. Everything you said before the word but is meaningless. Yep. Right, right. And so Paul is, he t gives us this lecture here about, uh, yeah, the attitude to have, and now he says, but. So he's, I think he's saying, but he who is uncertain about eating a particular thing is condemned if he eats because he is not acting from faith. So the question Paul's bringing up here is, okay, but everything I says, I want you to you know, apply this to your lives, but you have to ask this person, are they doing it because they think the faith requires it mm -hmm. part of our saving faith? If so, then they're damned because they don't have complete faith in Jesus. You know, the bottom of that. Right. So uh, I, I reacted impulsively right away before Paul gave a thorough uh, teaching on the subject. And then he said, but, but mm -hmm. don't forget this, verify that their faith is correct. Yeah. Hey, uh, Brother Luke. Yeah. I see less of what is going on here. What I see more of are people that are weak in the faith trying to enforce their weakness upon those strong in the faith. That's what I see. Those that are weak yeah, in the faith yeah. that feel they're justified by what they eat and the holidays they celebrate, they are the ones trying to encrouch, <laughs> you yeah. know, and enforce their bondage upon those that are strong in the faith. Excellent. That's what I see. Excellent. I don't see those strong in the faith not respecting the weak in the faith. I see those weak in the faith trying to impose their weakness upon those that are strong in the faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did Paul write that about that? that? Where's Where's Paul's point make? On yeah, that? yeah. Well, we're, we're stronger in the faith, so I guess we're supposed to just put up with it. <laughs> we, we, we 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 do need to tell them, you know, you are free. You can be free of that. If you do that, make sure you're like you said, Luke. You're not doing that because you think it's making God pleased with you. Right. No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right, I guess that's uh, that's it. We'll pick up with uh, 15 verse 2 uh, next Wednesday. And uh, to the chat room, uh, thanks for participating. Uh, I was happy to be able to respond a couple of times to your comments and, and, and questions. So um, um, uh, moderators and uh, regular members of the congregation, I'm so happy to have you with us every time. And if it's you're new, uh, if it's your first time, I, I hope this is a good experience for you. Maybe you'll join us every Wednesday, uh, 9.30 p.m. Eastern time we begin. And also you can join us on Sundays. We have our church program Sundays at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Amen. That's the live broadcast. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you all for participating and bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus.